What's going on, everybody? My name is C4. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're here for episode three of our NCAA Football 14 College Football Revamped Created Dynasty of the Hollywood Tech Honey Hunters. And the last episode had two epic games for us. One was a win that was an ESPN Classic. Two was a loss against a freaking FCS school, which became our new number one ESPN Classic, a low-scoring game with an ending that I still do not believe happened. They have a timeout? So in today's episode, we are going to have our matchup here against Arkansas State, Texas State, Louisiana Monroe, and we're going to finish up week nine against Coastal Carolina. So for this first season of Hollywood Tech, I'm going to be splitting up into four games per episode. So that way there, you know, it's going to give us you know, our 12 games on the schedule. And then I think in season two, I'm going to try something different and we're going to do a full season in one video. And I want to kind of see which one of these styles, which one of these approaches uh, is we'll test it out and see the analytics and kind of come back to what is going to be the best way to present the series because there's kind of two ways of doing it. And I've had, I mean, I asked from our very first episode, what do you guys want to see in way of a series? And I had almost split down the middle. People want to see episodic, you know, like we're doing right now. We'll do four games, four games, four games, four games, four, five, six-ish episodes per season. Or we could do one full long form, one season, and comp everything into one video. So, hey, why not just mess around and try to figure out what the best way going forward is for Hollywood Tech. Four games on the schedule. They're going to be tough. Every game's going to be tough if we lose to an FCS team. That is supposed to be a guaranteed win. And when you can't win the guaranteed wins, things become a little difficult. So, looking at this stretch, I feel like Louisiana Monroe Week 8 is is a juicy game to target and i bring that up because we have more players that are ready to visit and i feel like of a remaining schedule that is probably the next you know you're going to circle it as a win we had the players that visited during our fcs loss which was brutal so we didn't really get any extra bumps on any of these players but for most of our squad right now i'm feeling decent about us being able to uh, really hammer home this this recruiting class, our first recruiting class. Uh, I am a little bummed out, and you'll see in just one second as we get all these guys kind of putting all of our eggs in one basket of Louisiana Monroe. Because we're a little bit late to decide how we can recruit offensive linemen, it's going to be tough. We got Fred Smith and David Edmond. I, I think we were just a little too late in the ball. We were on these guys in the preseason that rolled into week one, week two, where you could do a lot of damage. And build a lot of groundwork, establishing a relationship with these recruits. Uh, I think we'd have a shot. We're going to stay with it as long as we possibly can. But, I mean, we're going up against some pretty big schools here. Penn State and Iowa there. And Wisconsin with a big lead on Fred Smith. But for everybody else, we are looking at an outstanding spot to land a lot of quality athletes from this first recruiting class. I uh, hope they gain a little bit of ground there on Syracuse for Gerald Brooks. But, I mean, our top two guys in line to land them. So, that's pretty good. Take a look at the standings. We've yet to play a conference opponent. So that is where we're going to get in this big stretch as we have Texas State, Coastal Carolina. We have on the other side here, Arkansas State and Louisiana Monroe. So four straight games within the conference, which we are going to really just test ourselves and see where we're at against the rest of the Sun Belt. Obviously, it'd be very optimistic to assume that we can compete here in year one, but you never know. I, I think we I think we can find a way to win a couple of these games in this four game stretch. And quickly, statistically speaking, roll into the episode. I mean, we've we've been finding a groove here or there. Seven touchdowns, four picks, nine hundred yards for Bob Podolsky, who is working every single day, every single week with offensive mastermind Tom Savage. They get caught up to speed and using his Olympic caliber athleticism when it comes to shot put and refining that to be a passing quarterback. Uh, we're seeing a lot of good things out of Bob Podolsky. We've been able to rely a lot on Chris McCool, the track star, out of the backfield. He has been arguably our most consistent weapon. And uh, if the transfer portal was a thing, which I, there could be. I've seen, I've had guys transfer, but usually not start. If the, someone would be all over him. He'd be going to a P5 school, if not like somewhere in the, the Pac-12, RIP, the Big Ten, the Big 12, whatever you want to call it. One of those big schools would be like, oh, look at that track guy that's just running all over everybody. He would be gone. Uh, the the uh, basketball star, Jaquiz Shaq, 7-footer. 
He's been a nice, reliable threat for the most part over the middle of the field. 159 yards, two touchdowns for Unka Gems. 238-2 for Tito Williams, the speedster. Uh, Rich has made some plays. Joe Vicious has made some plays. Gabe Passmore, our Taysom Hill of the offense with two receiving touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. Uh, and he also is technically a backup quarterback. Knock on wood, we never have any injuries. And on the defensive side, well, we've made some plays behind the line of scrimmage. Five TFLs, three sacks for Talon Wilkinson. Vlad Gilchrist has been able to make a couple plays. BD Wells on that defensive line. We get the force fumble from Teddy Frazier. We have a big-time hitter and Fakir Couch. So there are plenty of good things we've seen through our first four games. But I think over the next four, we are really going to see where this squad is at because we don't have two games against FCS schools, which theoretically we should be able to run up. We're going to be going at four straight divisional conference, whatever you want to break it down opponents. And our first one up is a team that is also two and two in Arkansas state who has a big time advantage in pretty much every talent category. That is why Corso is taking them, but that gives us a great opportunity to shock the world and get a dub here to start the episode. In terms of team talent, this is now, and this, there's a chance this happens over and over again, keeps one-upping, but this is now officially the highest discrepancy between our team's rating and an opponent's rating, as Arkansas State's not really that bad. Man, the amount of face masks. I get this is because of the slider set. But it's also a reflection of the lack of awareness, the lack of play rec. Brutal, man. We got to lead the nation in face masks. Right, we're going to bring King here on a corner blitz. Second and 10. Need to make a stand here. Oh, look at that. We shot the gap perfectly. Come on, reward me for making the right call. Here we go. Wonky throw. I'm going to give credit on the interior pressure there. And we hold to a field goal attempt. Not a bad bend, don't bake, opening drive in hostile territory, even though Arkansas State not known to be an outstanding home field advantage. It's tough for us, nonetheless, seeing more than 35 people in the stands. That's a good start. Jaquiz Shaq. Oh, he throws a stiff. That's a hell of a tackle, to be honest with you. Whatever that DB is, he's definitely not seven foot two. 60, 265. That's a hell of a job to bring down that big man. The lead block there by Uncut Jebs. And that springs Chris McCool, 28 yards. We're getting pretty deep in Arkansas State territory. After a couple nothing burgers, back to back play calls. We are in field goal range, third and 10. Don't really want to mess this up. Points are in reach. Messed it up. Triple coverage. That's smart. Not only triple coverage, you throw it to the backup quarterback. Number three here on third and long. Great opportunity for the defense to get off the field. Let's go BD Wells on the inside. Power lifter. Got the double team command. Actually shedded his block. That was just too much yards to go. Another solid stop for the defense. Run game just not there right now. Third and 11, setting us up in a clear passing situation. Maybe a slant. That's what we need. A slant to the house. Tito Williams utilizing that 99 speed. Come on, man. We get, we're not doing anything. Our defense is doing an outstanding job. Our offense is failing to capitalize. As I as I would in Madden, it's it's not it's not as responsive. It's just the nature of the time. The games have progressed to a little bit. It's obviously for better or for worse, depending on who you ask. But uh, oh my god, I would say I'm on point in the Cardinals franchise. You give me Owen Pablo, I can wreck any quarterback's life trying to throw over the middle. Teddy Frazier, fuck your couch. You gotta find a pocket here. I will say we do run a lot of blitz. You know, we run what the coach wants. And we're going to need literally anybody to get off their blocks. And that is James Blackman, former Florida State quarterback, untouched. We do get the ball to start the second half. So if we can get some points here 
And true enough, clock out that this is the final possession of the first half. I think good things can happen, but man, we are... We're not looking in rhythm on the offense. Our team is rattled from losing to the FCS school last week. That kid absolutely derailed his season. Brutal. Oh, I didn't come to play today. Oh, wide open. Oh, broken tackle on a right out. That's a, that's a dot. To Valiant's Hunt. Cool name. That was that was I was that was the runner up for my son. If it wasn't Tyson, it was gonna be to Valiant's. And there's just okay, the unstoppable quarterback run. They saw our tape against Army and said, well, we could do that. Let's get the let's get Chris McCool involved here. Get a quick to Shaq. It's not an easy catch to make under contact. Throw it! All right, two end zone interceptions. It's about the uh, the tail of the tape here in the first half. There's 14 off the board. Go! Oh! Go, oh, Jerry Joe Vicious! Oh! Go! Oh, there's a flag. No way! No way! All right, Crease, take it to the house. Get the trick daddy. I can hear the trick daddy playing. Take it to the house, baby. Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody want to play a little run defense. Ran over there. Marcel Murray. Three-yard touchdown run. It's just been a relentless rushing attack from Arkansas State. Quarterback and running back. Tyson Willi uh, Tito Williams. Oh, yeah. There's a nice little splash play there. Get some confidence back with our quarterback as well. And again, man, two end zone picks. Imagine if those went our way. Even if one of those went our way. No. Oh, no. Come on, pass boy. You're a taste of hill for a reason. Where's their penalty calling it back? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, what are we thinking? Even try to run a play action there. All right, on to next week. All right, we'll close this one out. Not a hot start. I mean, Chris McCool can hold his head up to high. But, I mean, there's 21 points that we had off the board. Two, well, I mean, hypothetically, we had two end zone turnovers. So that's a 14-point swing. We had a kickoff touchdown called back. You know, you give us 21 more points. You know, this game was closer than the scoreline. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're not going to win a lot of games with your quarterback. Goes for eight completions, three picks, one touchdown. Shadow Chris McCool did his best. Uh, Shaq made some plays. Tito Williams had the uh, big touchdown. Joe Vicious on the kickoff was great. BD Wells had a standout performance, three TFLs and a sack, but overall not good enough. Game two is against Texas State, two and three. We're looking for our first conference win here in the Sun Belt. And you look at how these teams line up, and our defense is Second in passing allowed, fifth in total yards. Our offense, I'm actually surprised our, our rushing rank is that low. But an opportunity here. All right, we got to move third and medium. Great chance to get off the field here. We're going to try and, and not blitz and try to cover. And they end up just. 
No chance to pin our ears back. Third down. Let's get this stand. They are fringe field goal range. Don't know the... Wilkerson gets pressure. And the linebackers piss down their legs. Another third down conversion. God, report an assault. There you go, good tackle there. Vlad Gilchrist brings him down. I mean, just an agonizingly long drive. They're chewing up the entirety of the first quarter because our team can't get off the field on third down. Third and goal. At least worst case here, we get the ball finally on offense. We're not going to blitz with Gilchrist. We're going to try to cloud up the goal line here. Felt like it was inevitable. That was a good throw. Good catch as well. Hold on. Big third and six here to start the second quarter. Could potentially be four down territory if we get this close. Priest McCool wide open. Priest McCool runs. That weren't great. Gives us a third and six. Fringe field goal range to get some points here on this drive. Another Jaquiz Shack drop. We're not putting it. I'll tell you that right now. If it's too long, if 48 is too long of a field goal, we need we need to draw something else up here. Let's get in the gun. Let's go fade smash. We're gonna go back to Jaquiz Shack. He's going to be our A. I'm going to trust he's going to make a play. Oh, my God. We actually got Tito Williams at the top. I like that. I like that. I liked it. I did like it. Oh, now they're just... It's just... We're exposed. Like I'm pretty sure Texas State is like a f air raid, throw the football school. And they're like, nah, we're just going to run it. They can't stop it. Had a guy there. Had a Oh, maybe that, maybe that's finally not going to be a flag against us. I'd love to see. Oh, it's against us. It's against a team that has everyone under 20 awareness and like 20 play wrecks. Shocking. They're this undisciplined. I don't know. Can we get this with our legs? I think we gotta go for it. At least, at least see if we like. Worst case, punt it. But if we get something where it's like press, or like a free release there for Shaq, I feel like there's gonna be something on the right hand side. I mean, our offense reeks of desperation because we are desperate for a play. And we're chasing that play, and it's, it's ugly. And it feels like at this point, 21 points is insurmountable lead. Oh. It's a hell of a play. Star player on that defense, Tupu. Got to go for this one. Wish I wish it was shorter so we could keep it on the ground. We're going to have to try to air this one out. Maybe Joe Vicious. It's just nothing from the O-line. Nothing. Back-to-back -back weeks. Arkansas State, Texas State are dominating the line of scrimmage. Okay, here we go with the quarterback runs. At this point, it's just like, can we just have someone knock him out? Knock him out. Let's go headhunt. Bring in Greg Williams for D.C. Whatever we need to do. Come on, man. That was a hell of a pass rush from Wilkinson. Pushes the tackle back into the quarterback. No one else there to help him. Look at this. <laughs> man, we are just... We're getting played off the field right now. This is fucking embarrassing. 
We're going to go for it. And if we don't get this one, we're just going to have to wave the white flag. We got two more games we can get to. It's going to it's gonna kill the whole team's morale if we keep the starters out. So I think we pull the starters. Unless we can get this shot play. They're pressing Tito Williams at the top. If he can get that 99 speed going. But it looks like there's a safety. Yeah. White flag. We'll go on to the next one. Big game next week. A lot of recruits visiting against Louisiana Monroe. Pull the starters. Let's get out of here. Embarrassing. 42... To nothing. A shutout. Pazmore came in, didn't do anything. Uh, Chris McCool couldn't do anything. I mean, if Chris McCool can't break off big runs, uh, we're going to struggle immensely. Defense couldn't get any pressure. Only two plays that whole game were behind the line of scrimmage against Texas State. Embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. Even knowing where we're at as a school in its infancy, we're better than this. So on top of all the prospects visiting this week, none more than the two offensive linemen are the biggest priority. And looking at what we need, we need to hit. We need to get everything we possibly can. So we got to rush for over 100 yards, pass for over 250. Like that's over 500 extra points. That can close the gap, especially when you're looking at, you know, right there, Fred Smith. That would be like the bell of the ball for our draft class. If we could find a way to steal him away from Wisconsin. And it would help for David Evans as well. Luckily, Louisiana, there's a reason why we scheduled this as the visit week. They have yet to get a victory. They are 0-5, looking for their first win. Could it be a better week to get our first win in the Sun Belt Conference? And look at that, man. We got, they're only showing two. We got seven, eight guys visiting this week. If we're going to play one good game this whole episode, it needs to be this week. The game is raining. Which I think, given the state of our passing offense, it's going to be which team can run the football the best. And I like Chris McCool in that situation. Third and 11. Come on, Podolsky. Give me something. Give me a good throw. Give me a great throw. Uncut jams. Feels like it's been a minute since we've had a freaking passing completion. That, that's nice. Ooh, this, if we get our blocks here, this could be a big... Well... I don't know. That's, does that seem like 97? Is, is Chris McCool healthy? It was very slow for a guy with 97 speed to get brought down like that for a game to zero. Third and four. That's my least favorite thing in fucking NCAA, man. The amount of times you can get caught from behind like that. Defense, Delmar Kane, our starting DN that got hurt week one, is back. Maybe that's... Fuck sakes! No, it doesn't mean anything, actually, him being back. We go, BD Wells. Actually, I think that might even Delmar Kane get on that board there. He did, first game back, one sack. I'm terrified, though. We got Coastal Carolina. It's probably the toughest game on our whole schedule. They're going to beat us 73-0 with the way that this team has been playing. There we go. Kane with another sack. Good playing. It won't be shocking if Louisiana Monroe figures out how to convert this play. But we then don't break. We give up the big run. We get a couple sacks. It's a good response. All right, we got Julius Rich at the top getting pressed. Should we throw up to Quiz Shack? Go! Seven footer, 53 yards. Finally, an explosive play from someone not named Chris McCool or Tito Williams. That's actually a good throw. Podolski got popped. Let's go off tackle here, third and four. Terrified after last week. We got to, well, two weeks ago against Arkansas State. Got to this spot twice. Two picks. Just can't have that happen. So let's punch it in with Chris McCool. There we go. Beautiful. And another sack on the inside. That's BD Wells. Come on, can we entice them? This is, our, this is like our best spot. 
I get this is such a cheese play, but like our best bet is to just press my athletes. So maybe they get a chance to make some plays downfield and utilize their athleticism because that's all we got. Oh man, we got to make that easy. That should be an easy touchdown. No oh, one's on him. Got Shaq in the middle, seven footer. Could be a mismatch. It is a mismatch. And thank God Monroe sucks. Putting on a show for the recruits. A little read option there and house call. Go. Got a boy. Crease. 45 yards. That's what we need to see more of. Great lead block there by Jams. That's a that's a dog. He's not big. He's like 5'10, 170. But blocking and willing to block is a mentality. Maybe go to him. Reward good blocking. Oh, there's been a couple stuffs here, but third and goal, we need a yard and a half. Four down territory. Let's run it again. Let's run it again. You know what we need. C4 special to the left. Even though I've been questioning the speed of crease. I don't think he'll let us down here. I don't think he'll let us down here, baby. Let's go. Second tutty of the day. Third and seven. Need every drive at this point to be like a nice, methodical or shot play drive. We need the yards for the boosts. Boom. That's what we need it. He gone. But uh, they're barely staying in the shot of frame there. That's how much speed we got with Tito Williams. Oh, there we go. There's our quota. We need at least, if we're not getting at least two, three face masks a game, that's not Honey Hunter defense. Honestly, at this point, just let them score. I need more time. I need more offensive snaps. We need 20 more yards passing to get that 250 goal for the recruits. We need probably 30 more rushing yards to get the 100 yards rushing for the recruits. That's my big priority right now. Not limiting how much points we allow. Damn. All right. Let's go for it. I like the coach wants to go for it anyways. One for one on fourth down. We got, I mean, again, another potential shot play there. Tito Williams could be running. Oh, we throw it up to the tight end, and we throw it five yards past the end zone. He has 97 throw power, but he does not know how to had to nozzle it a little bit. Let him score. Let him score. Oh my god. They're going to give them a fucking flag of like blocking. They're going to bring it. I'm going to decline it. I don't give a shit. No, don't care. Congrats on the touchdown. I disagree with that ref's call. Congrats. If this bites me in the ass, it's going to be bad. Let's go, Crease. Let's go. Rush for 100 yards. We at least got one of our goals. Third touchdown, the hat trick for Crease McCool. And a win. And the losing skid. I don't think anyone gets credit for it. I'd like to give it to Del Marquette, who might very well have three sacks in his first game back from injury. But a nice win against, yeah, it's an 0-5 team. But given the slide that we've been on, you can't be picky with your wins. You got to stack them whatever way you can get them. 
Take a look at that's clean game for Podolski, who struggled with turnovers the last couple weeks. 230 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, over 100, and a hat trick from Chris McCool. So I'm surprised that when we find ways to win games, he usually has a big performance. A couple nice shot plays there to Shaq and at Tito Williams. Our passes are very much quality over quantity. Two TFLs, two sacks for the returning Delt Marcane. He's not even at 100%. BD Wells also throwing in a sack there. Generally speaking, happy with our defense as well. All right, a recap from our visits. Fred Smith got plus 700, which is huge. Same with Evans, our two linemen that we're trying to chase right now. And I, you know, I mean, we're kind of seeing right now the uh, the position suggestions for all of our athletes. Keith Alexander, Newman, and Jamal Nelson. We have our first commits in Hollywood Tech Honey Hunter history. I love seeing that. Lewis Hicks committed. He's the guy with all the speed. That's pretty good. Pretty good haul. Before we focus on Coastal, we do get some upgrades here for our offensive, defensive, and head coach. I think, again, we go with the nice plus six to injury and just work our way up the tree. The first tree of our OC is not particularly good. On the defensive side, block set injury. I think we just sell. I mean, block set could. You know what? We'll go block set here to upgrade here and get some help to the secondary. And for Tom Savage, because we're in the back end of the season, we've already had a lot of our visits. Uh, I think we will upgrade and give us an extra 500 points to close out the year. Look at our board as it stands, our class. I mean, we've beat out a couple couple big schools. Adam Hill, we took him away from Auburn. Newman there from Texas a and They got a lot of money. But the, the big change is we got a lot of ground gain here for David Evans. But the potential bell of the ball here, Fred Smith, the 77 guard. We have now leapfrogged Wisconsin after handling our business against Louisiana Monroe, which is gigantic. And looking for the rest of these guys. Uh, we're maxing. We don't have a whole lot of points left. Brooks is going to be tough. Looks like he's probably locked into Syracuse. But we get Vince Miller locked in the Juco. Even though it says he's quarterback, we'll find a spot. Maybe, you know, it might not be the worst thing to have a legit quarterback to put some pressure on Podolsky there. But I, I do think the rest of these guys are going to start to fall, and our recruiting class is going to take some good shape here in the next couple weeks. But to close out today's episode, we have a banger against, in terms of, like, base overall, Coastal Carolina is probably the strongest team in the Sun Belt, even though their record isn't indicative of that. I think that they are going to be looking at this matchup as a game to put in all hurting on the Honey Hunters. And Corso is side, and this is going to be a tough one. And yeah, that's pretty good ratings. An 84 overall, 86 offense, 85 defense. I don't think there's anyone even particularly close in the Sun Belt that can rival those ratings. Oh, he throws a pick! Wow! Shocking! Right into the linebacker, Vlad Gilchrist. Bobsled ace with the interception. Go, go, go. Breaks the tackle. Man, there is definitely an element, for the most part, that if we, you know, Utah State, we beat Utah State, that, that's a tougher team. We definitely play up to our competition and down to our competition as seen with our loss to FCS Southeast. Get a chain mover type type play here. Unka jams across the middle. Unka jams into the red zone. And there's our Taylor Swift. Get him off the screen. He's going to graduate next year and still just always pop up. Let's go crease. Run him over. Oh, that's a big hit. Damn it. Uh, third and goal. And just, yeah. I guess we'll take the points. Hate that. Well, we're on the board. Wrap him up. Wrap him up. Got some some Russian hitman out there, Luchachenko. For that field goal, it was what the coach wanted. I don't want to 
override him more often than not. But I just, you know, come on. It's it's there's a, it's inevitable that things like this are going to happen. We got very lucky with the interception. And we're not going to win. We're not going to stay in this game settling for field goals. I would have rather just go for it. But, you know, Coach Savage is coach for a reason. You can't go rogue every single time. But... That field goal's not looking pretty good after that drive. Man, the run game is going to be a mismatch on the line of scrimmage for sure. Not, definitely not as much as we saw uh, against Louisiana Monroe in terms of Honey Hunter linemen holding on to their blocks, creating lanes. We're going to put James here on the slant. It's been a decent hot, hot route for us. But look, we got... I mean, just fucking better throw. Shaq's open. Can't clear the linebacker. I feel like this could be a turning point where this game gets a little one-sided if our defense can't provide a little resistance. Screen. Watch the screen. It's over there. Oh, wait. It's not good enough. Very, very boring methodical offense here. I almost... It's a, it's a early afternoon. I've yawned because they're just six, seven-yard runs. Cut, 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 death by a thousand cuts, which not the first time we've seen that this year. It's just, it's hard to, it just, our defense, you know, feels like we're going through the motions here. It's just like, oh, it's just delay the inevitable. Let them get five, six, chew up the whole fucking quarter. And not give our offense a chance to hit any explosives. But there we go. Big play, Gilkers. Flag. Don't know what that would be. All right, we'll take it. Still second down. Second and 16 after the holding call. Can our defense get a little pressure? We got Kane. That's got to be Kane. Coming off the edge. Oh, wow. Great job, defense. And that's probably, I think it's going to be roughing on Kane. I smashed Grayson McCall. Yep, let him feel our warmth. Send him to hellfire and brimstone, every bit of it. Man, what were we thinking taking that field goal? Oh, another one! Go! Let's go! These turnovers. Cordarius right that's his second pick of the year. First pick in school history. Second pick of the game against Grayson McCall. Easily the best quarterback we'll go against all year. I don't know how they have momentum right now. Got two picks. Hey, this would be a rattled stadium, not a... Oh, we had him too. Fuck, come on, O-line! Oh, gotta go back to four verts. Fucking and chuck it offense. Tito Williams top, that's where we want to try to get this to. If our O-line can protect. Oh my god, let's go! Tito, what a dot. It's a wobbler, but there's flames coming off that wobbler with the 97 throw power. And somehow, Hollywood Tech leads Coastal Carolina. God damn it. It's tough to stop. It's tough to stop if you don't have the, the technique, and we are severely lacking in that department. All right, hopefully... They decide to throw the football here. That's where we've had our luck. Just cool us out there, man. Chickens with their head cut off. Uh, intermediate passing has been a struggle. We can hit the shot play. But when we need we need something over the middle that requires a little bit of finesse. Not nearly reliable enough. We go to Joe Vicious, the return man. That ultimate frisbee background. Going up and getting the ball, making guys miss is a strength. Showed up on full display right there. Depending on if, if we can get this to fourth and one, if we don't outright get it, I think I'm going to go for it. Fourth quarter, everything to play for. That's what it's going to be. All right. I'm online. Give me a chance. 
They're gonna jam the line. Come on, baby. Come on! Good effort! The screen. Read that well. It doesn't. Oh, that's a big hit. Going backwards. Got to sell out here, man. They touched out. This one's probably over. Field goal. We got a shot. We'll go cover two. Where's Gilchrist? Oh, we got Frazier out here. All right, that works. Teddy Frazier. They're going for a screen again. Good job, baby. Hold on to a field goal. Right, it's through. I'm gonna. It's preemptive. It was gonna take a lot, but if we get down there, I might go for two to try to win this. Come on, old line. I mean, just when you when you only have one or two plays you can run when you gotta throw it, it makes it really really tough. For me. We gotta, we're going for it. This is gonna be game. Please press. Please give us a, a blessed opportunity here by pressing one of my guys and we didn't get the look I mean we made it competitive I thought we we're gonna lose by 70 but when your offensive line is this bad there's just no belief unless you're going against FCS unless you're going against winless Monroe that you're going to be able to, uh, you know, compete at a high level. Because it all starts with... That's why all these non-Power 5 Cinderella teams will get smoked by, like, Vanderbilt if they play. Because it's just... The trenches, it's, it's a different level. College football lives and dies in the trenches. If you have a good O-line, if you have a good D-line, it trumps everything. It trumps good quarterback play. It, trump, it trumps, like, athletes, running backs, skill position players. All about the line of scrimmage. Fucking snap the ball! Get this shit over with! And victory for Mage Egg. GG's. They're a better team. Played like it. We, you know, it's embarrassing for them that they got the uh, the interceptions, to be honest with you. Absolutely embarrassing. They came to that. And, um, you know, at least we got a win. We got one win, but our run defense needs... A complete overhaul this offseason. The stats, uh, you know, tell a story, man. Overmatched, line of scrimmage. But also, yeah, at least we didn't turn the football over. Just couldn't run the ball. 2.2 .2 yards per carry. Uh, really outside of the 81-yard touchdown. Nothing on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, uh, DeMar Cain, I'm glad he's a freshman. Glad he's, because he's a guy that's already showing signs as a 58 overall. Making the plays that he is. We might got something there. Guy that we can develop into a real good player. The ball silver lining is we did get upgrades for all of our coaches. We also got 76 overall Vince Miller, quarterback, more, still again, athlete, to recruit. That's a big-time recruit. Anyone over 70 is going to be a big get. Uh, we also got Greg Webb, Jeremy McRae, and Jason Jackson. Savage, we just got to continue to pump points in to the recruiting. I would say at this point, I, I guess we just go and think maybe more so bigger picture next year, get the maximum boost when we get the players in for the visits. We really need to unlock this next tier. It's going to be huge to be able to go into the kitchen sink. That's probably one of my favorite ones. To start adding in extra points. Get it up to, what, 750? I think would be the highest I can get. But that is how we're going to end the episode. One in three. Not how I envisioned it. But at least on the week that we had all of our recruits coming in. We handle business. We still have more touchdowns and interceptions for Podolski. We're still on track for 1,000 yards. Double-digit touchdowns for Chris McCool. Need to find more consistent of a passing offense. It's just so freaking hard with the offensive line just being turnstiles across the board. But we're getting some guys that are standing on the defensive side of the ball. Wells, Wilkinson, Gilchrist, Kane, Frazier. Fuck your couch. A little bit of a fan favorite. So I think for how shaky we all knew this season was going to be, there's been plenty enough good that we can kind of hang our hat on to see where this project is going. So we will be back. Before too long to finish out the regular season, our four remaining games, I don't think we're going to be 
uh, in a bowl game conversation. I don't think we're going to be in the conference championship. So likely the next episode will take us to the end of the first year of the Hollywood Tech Honey Hunters. So I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. As always, the first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's your boy Steve Force saying peace out. I love you. Have a good one.